Year seven is huge for us. This year brings a lot of changes that we haven't seen before in the game. So Siege year seven is going to be the most ambitious uh, roadmap that we've ever had. We are challenging ourselves to redo things and to rethink how we approach our seasons. What this means is that we're going to be challenging ourselves to see how we can improve the game at all levels. Game-changing operators, new maps for the first time in three years, tackling toxicity like we've never done at a Ubisoft level, and also doing technological transitions on the back end to be future-proof. So for year seven, we'll be bringing four seasons as usual and a new operator each season. First off, in year seven, season one, we'll be heading to Japan. So a country that we already visited, but that we love. In season two, we'll be heading back to Europe, in Belgium more specifically. In season three, we'll be heading back to Asia, in Singapore. And in season four, we'll be heading to South America, in Colombia. First off, in season one, uh, we'll be uh, doing an Irish country club map. In season two, we'll be bringing a new map, which is a team that match map uh, set in Greece. In season three, finally, uh, we'll be uh, heading to Singapore. So there will be two uh, versions of the year pass, the year seven pass and the year seven premium pass. We know that a lot of players like the one-stop purchase that was the year pass. This is why we're bringing it back for a time limited period. This will give you the access to the four operators in early access uh, like before, exclusive customization and access to the four battle pass. Player protection, c'est un sujet qui est très important pour nous. Nous avons travaillé sur un set d'options. Avec le lancement de la saison 1, nous ferons aussi des améliorations au niveau de la détection des abus qui sont effectués par des joueurs et qui déconnectent juste après les avoir faits. En saison 2, nous allons nous attaquer aux récidivistes qui abusent du Friendly Fire. L'abus du Reverse Friendly Fire est aussi quelque chose que nous n'acceptons pas. La résultante de cette sanction est induite par le fait de ne plus pouvoir faire de Friendly Fire à travers un match sur une durée long terme. Nous allons appliquer ce système-là aussi au voice chat, mais aussi au chat écrit. À partir de ce moment-là, nous allons ajouter des options de reporting au sein du match replay. Nous vous avons entendu. Nous savons qu'il est important de pouvoir reporter des joueurs qui ont fait du harassment, de la toxicité ou qui ont généré du cheating. Aussi avec la saison 3, nous ferons l'introduction du Reputation Score et avec le lancement de saison 4, un système de récompense et de sanctions commencera à être déployé. Notre but avec cet ensemble est de bloquer les récidivistes et de fournir un environnement qui soit plus sécuritaire et fair. Donc à présent, on a une équipe dédiée pour s'occuper de l'expérience console. Donc ce qu'on veut, c'est rajouter une gamme d'options pour le joueur afin qu'il puisse tweaker, paramétrer sa manette. Donc en ce qui concerne la visée, c'est plus dur de viser et de contrôler avec une manette par rapport à un clavier souris. Donc déjà, on veut séparer les réglages entre juste regarder et la DS, de pouvoir paramétrer les vitesses de rotation. Et à partir de là aussi, le joueur pourra trouver ce qui lui correspond le mieux. On veut davantage personnaliser les récoltes sur console. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, on applique une valeur stricte arbitraire de 20% en moins de récoltes pour les joueurs console. Et on veut sortir de ça. Donc on veut vraiment prendre les weapons et puis les paramétrer de manière individuelle comme on le fait déjà sur, euh, sur PC. Donc euh, le champ de vision sur console euh, est restreint. Les joueurs PC peuvent paramétrer le champ de vision de 60 à 90. Par contre, sur console, les joueurs sont bloqués à 60 et n'ont pas de possibilité de pouvoir jouer avec ce chiffre. Donc ça, c'est une frustration pour les joueurs. C'est quelque chose qu'ils demandent depuis très longtemps. Donc euh, bah, je suis contente de dire qu'on est en train de travailler dessus. Et donc là, ça va offrir plus de confort pour le joueur parce que finalement, ça va élargir le champ de vision. Donc ils vont pouvoir avoir des choses, plus de choses, d'éléments autour d'eux. Alors pour régler le champ de vision, l'idée, c'est d'avoir comme sur la, la version PC, avoir un slider. Il y a vraiment l'aspect tactique et de voir des éléments euh, en plus et donc de pouvoir plus, plus vite réagir. Donc ce qui est très important dans, le, bah, dans notre jeu. Siege is a, it's a complex game, so it's going to require multiple angles for us to work on in order to ultimately introduce new players to Siege or to help players returning to Siege 
uh, notice what's different about since the last time they played. A few facets that we're looking into, one would be learn areas. So the first of which would be at the shooting range. So these are playable spaces that the players can enter and they can practice, they can train, they can learn by doing. So that way players are actually getting hands-on in these learning experiences without the pressure of being within a match. And, you know, the ticking timer, the, the fear of contribution towards your team. We want to give players a space where they can uh, set aside some time and they can learn and they can discover and use this information to better themselves in Siege. Some of the new onboarding tools they're working on are operator tips. Operator tips are going to be accessible whether in your operator album or even in match, which allow you to pull up information about each operator and tell you a little bit more about either the operator itself, the, the gadgets that they come ready to use, as well as the secondary gadgets and anything that might be specific to attacker or defender. So for year seven, we are adding three main things. So first, we will add a team deathmatch playlist to the offer. Then we will revamp the rank experience and also add the permanent arcade playlist. Today, the team is not very happy about two things uh, on rank. First, it's seen by the player as a progression system that you should progress in terms of ranks. But in fact, the system is trying to guess your rank as fast as possible and it's not at all a progression. We want to fix that. With the new system, it will start in copper and will always go up until it reach his bronze and maybe reach silver or might reach gold. So first, we are improving two things for the reward. The number of rewards you will get and also the way you get them. What we are changing is that we are making every rank 100 points from each other and we are putting a reward for each rank. So right now the current target for the new rank system is year 7 season 3. By adding permanent arcade, we decided to create a playlist where you will have the different arcade that we've created rotating every week. We want Siege to be less stressful and more welcoming. En termes de balancing, notre philosophie est toujours la même, c'est d'assurer une, une expérience juste et équilibrée. Pour la NS7, on a plusieurs, euh, bah, beaucoup de rework. Donc d'abord, en ce qui concerne les opérateurs, donc on a déjà communiqué sur Valkyrie et Goyo, qui vont arriver début d'année. Mais aussi, nous travaillons par exemple hein, sur Zero, pour que sa caméra n'auto-perspue automatiquement la surface, mais que ce soit un choix du joueur, donc que ce soit manuel. Nous avons aussi Bandi, donc de pouvoir déployer une batterie, euh, bah, plusieurs batteries sur, une, sur un même mur. Nous avons Dokebi, donc euh, Dokebi qui puisse affecter les joueurs éliminés par son appel. Et le gros rework là en cours, c'est euh, Thatcher. Aujourd'hui, avec les retours de la communauté, euh, on voit que le jeu est dans son meilleur état en termes d'équilibrage. Donc ça, c'est très important pour nous parce que ça nous ouvre d'autres portes. I'm really, really proud of the work that's being done in order to ship all of this content for you. In order to ship all the content that you've just seen, cross and cross -pollution is going to be taking a little bit more time. Also, the technological transition uh, that we need to do as a live game that has six years uh, of life behind us is taking a little bit more time than expected. cross and cross -pollution is going to be shipping towards the end of the year. This is probably the biggest year that Siege ever has. When it comes to the competitive roadmap for this coming year, we'll be heading to different regions across the year. For our first major, we'll be traveling to North America. The second major in August, we'll be heading to Europe or maybe Middle East. And the last major in November, we're going back to the Asia Pacific region. Our team has also been making long-term plans in terms of the Sixth Invitational. We know that in, starting in 2024, the SI will travel the world. We're also adjusting the tier system of our six share. We'll now be having only two different tiers for our partner organizations. Tier one will have 15 allocated slots, meaning that more teams will have the full bundle of items. Every other organization will fall into the tier two category. This means that overall there will be more items for you to purchase and to support your favorite players and teams. These were the high level updates for R6 Esports in 2022 but we have a lot more information coming up on our website and our social media channels. We've had a difficult time these last couple of years working from home through the pandemic. 
the thing that stands out the most is the resiliency that this game has, that the development team has. We're still bringing a lot of exciting content to the game and we're going to have our best year ahead onboarding new maps, player behavior. We're really excited to bring things that are going to be talking to all of our player base. Whether you're a casual player to a pro player, this is the commitment that we're doing this year. With Year 7, the entire Siege team is excited and ambitious. We want to deliver more. We really want to make sure that everybody who is playing the game feels like they belong, that they can still contribute to the game, and the game's still fun to play on top of that core. The roadmap brings a lot of visibility, and we also want to continue our improvement in communicating with you, the community, and the players. So you'll see the roadmap change every single season as we update it when we want to add new things, but also with the nature of a live game, things do change and we do shuffle things around. So you'll see at the start of every season, we're going to update this message and make sure that you're up to date with what we're doing. I love this game. We'll always try to push ourselves to do better and to give more to you, the community. And that's our promise to you. Siege is here to stay.